Okay, we are back for another Talk Moto podcast with arguably the busiest man in British motocross at this time of year, Matt Bates. Uh, as you can see, AX promoter. Before we get talking to Matt in his, in his playground, his garden. <laughs> My room. <laughs> your room. <laughs> uh, big shout out to the guys at Talon, uh, again, for just getting behind what we do. Thanks, Wobs. Again, you've been hitting them up. I We've have, got some yep. bike builds got on the go. some bike builds on the go. We've got a bit coming to Telford next couple of weeks. They've been helping us out with those, as they always do, good as gold. Best stuff, why wouldn't you use it? My wheels are square after Fox Hill, so I'm figuring I might need. We can probably, we can, I know a man who can sort, I know a man who can sort them out. I don't want any favours. <laughs> Nothing for nothing, kid. Yeah, yeah, too right. We what will me? get on to I that. I bought tickets for this yesterday for my family, because <laughs> I don't want to owe him hundred fucking pound. <laughs> And that's Just like I works. pay my entry. I've Fox got no Fox. problem with that, mate. Pay your way. Hold on, hold it took on. Took me a lot Before of years to figure that Fox. out. You said you were never going to do it again. Now you're I thinking know. about doing it. I know, I am. You need to do it, kid. Oh, don't. Once a year, that's all we ask. It's not I a know. lot. Of, not a big ask, is it? It's once a year, but it, it's like paying for four months afterwards. Oh, I know. But I was with Tom Fuller last weekend, and he was, he's already looking forward to it. He's yeah, like, it's a quality weekend. Yeah. Before we get onto that, if, if you're wondering if Matt looks a little bit uncomfortable, it's not because he's doing a podcast. It's um, previous injuries, basically. Yeah. So uh, I'll that. let you explain. Yeah. So you've I, got. Yeah. Uh, I've got a bit of a frozen neck and shoulder. <laughs> so you've just got to stare at Wobs the entire yeah, podcast. Yeah. You've seen enough there anyway. Not a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. It's looking good. A frozen <laughs> shoulder yeah. through just years of abuse, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's odd because my, sh- my damaged shoulder is my right one, which I've had a lot of operations on, which then. It, it, your trapezius shortens and then you can't turn can't years of self abuse I'm starting to think I think yeah, it's yeah. my he even yeah. knows the proper terms and everything. Yeah. tell how many times well, he's how many times you've been in a doctor's surgery you get to know these things don't yeah. you yeah anyway I just wasn't a good enough motocross rider that was a problem oh, you, look, don't do yourself an injustice yeah. let me and Wobbs put you down yeah, yeah. I'll leave it to <laughs> you. that's up for us to kick the guest down um, talking of which then let's go let's go right back to start so how did this all the, can we go we back are. before you get there we need to apologise to Matt because we've already done this once. Actually, yeah, yeah. we have. Yeah. And he dragged him all the way down to our studio and uh, somehow Danny fucked up the sound. <laughs> yes, Danny. It Your got, fault. That's it not got, actually true. It got corrupted. Eight hours it took me to get home. <laughs> so this is, <laughs> this is take two and I'm hoping we can remember what we talked about because it was mega the first yeah. one. And now Matt's got his head turned if he can turn his old yeah, body maybe. I've got it. Not I've got only that, he's like, going to hit us up with two invoices now as well, Bob. So, he is. Well, mind you, we've travelled out of this one anyway. Exactly, yeah. So, we'll, so we can... Uh, so, anyway. Yeah, here sorry. you are. Thank you. Doing what you do uh, in Arena Cross. But there's obviously, that's where we're currently at, but there's a start point to all this. And that's, yeah. that's how the hell did Matt Bates get to start riding a bike? How did this whole journey happen? God, well... I almost want to start every conversation sort of, like I said, yeah. a couple of months ago. But I'm yeah, don't say that. that. Try that. to remember yeah. everything you said. So I went to school. I was one of the, um, I was one of the few riders that actually came from London. And um, so I grew up in a place called Teddington and went to, went to school and a mate from school had a bike and I mithered my dad, you know, that I wanted to go and... Um, so your dad wasn't that. into it. Your dad didn't come. No, he, wasn't. he liked bikes. He had road bikes and stuff, but never not into off road. And then, and then, uh, he ended up letting me have a go on my friend's bike in his garden. And then, then, and then he bought me that bike. And then, literally, forty eight hours later, I remember again. I can't now remember if I told you this one, but forty eight hours later, my I remember my mum picking me up from school. I was only like nine, eight or nine, and she went. Your dad just bought a load of motocross bikes. I was like, what? She went, yeah, she's bought, he's bought himself one, he's bought me one, as in my mum, my sister, <laughs> and me, and a trailer. So we were like a bunch of pikies. They Never. were off down Hounslow Heath, which is Heathrow Airport, effectively. Yeah. Um, the ground, they'd land off of there, which is where all my family were from. Um, yeah, and then, then we all went out riding. Which that's crazy. That's I've started. never heard of that. Like you, you yeah, just, yeah. like you said, you just don't hear that of many now, motocross riders inside the M25. No, it just, no, no. It's like not many people. Well, would... I think that there's no. a shortage of land for a start. Yeah, and and yeah, there was one little motocross club. In fact, there's two. There's Bedfont Lake. It was called, I think. Anyway, but yeah, there, there, there was one little motocross club, and that was, um, and that's it, awesome. And the story of how. I then got racing was because the first day I ever rode on Hounslow Heath. I am. I'm looking at you still. No, no, you remember no, this story, no, yeah. right? But um, 
I was riding round and this lad who was probably 15, 16 at the time, maybe a bit older, was what we thought was a really good rider, was riding around and he stopped and spoke to my dad. And he was like, oh, you know, your son should start racing. My mum and dad run a club in London, in Hanworth, which is again where we lived. It's like, can you imagine having those conversations now? Like, finding a club and not only that, it was on your doorstep and it was in London. And it was just a beginner's kind of thing, yeah. how you just get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyway, that, that guy popped up in my life many years later when I started doing Grand Prix. And, um, and he is now, uh, well, I then worked for Kawasaki, I ran Team Green, ran all that stuff. And then this guy popped up again. I'm like, That's, I know this guy. So we got talking and he was like, yeah, do you, do you remember me? I was the, the first day you ever rode a bike. Never. And, um, and anyway, he is now the managing director of Kawasaki UK or Europe. Really? And, uh, and he's, he's um, Howard Dale. Howard. And um, that's mate, most that's people crazy. know Howard. And that's the first day I ever rode a bike, I met Howard. And if it wasn't for Howard, none networking of this would have from happened. the very start. Yeah, from the day one. From the day one, networking. Yeah, yeah. That is crazy. That's yeah. like meant to be stuff. Yeah, yeah. For, for you to end up yeah. there working. So when I see him now, we bump into each other every now and then. It is kind of like we always laugh about. Yeah. It. It's like, yeah, you're the reason. Yeah. That is that is absolutely yeah, yeah. bonkers. So, so rode for them, worked for them. And so Kawasaki's always been close to me. Yeah. You know, really has. Hence the banners on the track, I'm guessing. No, yeah, they just paid for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they should. I like them, but not that not much. Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but you case... need to know somebody there to get the money out yeah, of them, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It does that. Yeah. yeah, in case you haven't worked that out, um, obviously we're here at the uh, Resorts World Arena. Um, the, the you had to think then where you were, didn't you? you I were did, because they come thick yeah. and fast, Wobs. Yeah. Honestly, it's a bit of a whirlwind. But again, we'll talk about that in a while. Yeah. So you started racing, pretty pretty successful youth career, yeah. I would I would have yeah. said. Yeah, it was all right. It was a bit well, wild. Definitely a player. Yeah. A, bit, a bit wild. <laughs> Yeah, like I, like you know, I, I won. You were known as a trier. Credit where credit is due. You were known yeah, yeah. as a trier. Oh, that's, yeah. that's beautifully that's put. That's so I'm diplomatically insulted. put. Well, but you, I, I did all right. I, I, yeah, ended up winning quite a bit you and did. Did, did all right. You know, and, and but it's different. I think now where if you if you get to a decent level at a youth. As a, as a youth rider and you're supported by a team, maybe not so much now in our country because, you know, times are tough. You would be kind of nurtured through then into like an adult professional career if you're going to do it. But when I finished, I finished with te I finished my youth career with Kawasaki, with Team Green, which was the thing to... Yeah, you know, if you rode big with time. Team Green, you know... You made it. That yeah. was the thing. And I won everything in that year as well. And then literally dumped. Right, you've turned adult now. Don't want you. On your way. Yeah. And it's like, and the only guy that ever get, got pulled through that Kawasaki thing was Paul Maley. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, and then that was it. So I kind of had to start again. So, yeah, that was my youth career. I, I kind of enjoyed it, though. Family, isn't it? It's about being away with your mum and dad and family. Well, that's, that's an integral part of it, isn't it? I mean, yeah. that's why we do what we do. And it, people lose sight of that, don't they, still, don't you think? You know, you see it yeah. running these events yeah. and the pressures and, and stuff like that, that, that parents maybe... Yeah. I mean, this a is a yard. pretty family-friendly event, though. I mean, you have a lot yeah, on yeah. there, like, my two teenage daughters love it. Yeah. And they don't love it for the racing. They yeah. love it for all the razzmatazz and all the yeah. cheering and, and all the T-shirt throwing and all that. You other. can't lose track of what you're trying, you know, what, what motocross is. No. You know, and I, and I often think that that gets forgotten. You know, it's a family thing. It's about, you know, my sister and her son, her husband, they go away most weekends and they race as a club rider and yeah. they enjoy it they have great friends and i'm actually half jealous of that i'm like yeah. ah, you know you're going through that again and and but i do think that some parents perhaps you know there's a lot of pressure they put on their kids to do well and and in fact but hasn't that always been the way of course it has but you know what is it any worse now than it was the pressure that made it no like my, my dad put pressure on me once and my mum jumped on him so far she couldn't believe and it was like, never did I, it was like hardly ever pressure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you had a shit weekend, you didn't get McDonald's on the way home. But it was, you but know. That was wasn't... always the way though. There was always yeah. some people getting screamed and shouted at, which I never yeah. understood, but they, I understand That's... the family put a lot into stuff yeah, yeah. and the kid don't perform, but Jesus, you gotta. Yeah, you gotta remember why you're there. Yeah, like, you're and, there and for and a I, bit of, I, there, I go racing fun. with my son 
now. He doesn't race a lot. He's 15. Nice little rider. I enjoy watching him ride. Don't care where he comes. And I watch and I just think, how can you ever get that feeling of wanting to shout at your kid no. because he's not going fast enough? Effectively. Because you're too busy shouting at me and Matt. Yeah, exactly. I'll save So that. you save it all up for when we're out there exactly. doing a show. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I have seen some horrendous displays. No worse than in the States. You go to Loretta Lynn's, there's some of them there. Oh, you're like, yeah. I bet that is something You else need to be in the electric class in Arena Cross. Yeah. So some of the, um, some of the parents, because obviously there's no noise. No. So, so last weekend in, um, in, like in Belfast, it was like, holy, holy yeah. shit, you need to listen to some of these parents. Oh. I, get, I get it. You know, they're getting into it. I know. And they want so the kid in, to make the most of the opportunity. I get that. You know what we I mean? We had to that turn made... the music up. We were like, I said to Henry, our DJ, Henry, you need to put a bit of music on because... I don't want the audience hearing what they're saying. No. I suppose that's going to be a thing we have to deal with. The more electric comes in, yeah, yeah. someone's got to replace the noise. I know everybody loves the noise, but... Yeah. yeah. The locals pressure. don't. So the pressure then of being a like, parent and, you know, obviously the kids and everything. Yeah. So when you turned pro, how did you how did you cope with the pressure as a rider at that time? Because, you know, you, um, you were pretty much straight into... Yeah, Obviously, I mean, back then we, we, had the we had the um, top, 40. top 40. But with Team Green, you GPs. must have had pressure because there was pressure come with that job, whether you liked it or not. Yeah. Alec, Alec and them put, you know, you were expected to perform. Yeah, I could completely. And, but luckily I did in those couple of years. And, yeah. and so I didn't feel any pressure. But there was I mean, people who came, and, who came and went who didn't perform. They weren't yeah, there long. Yeah, they were gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. But I never felt that. I, I felt it when I what we were classed as turning pro, you know, what, what does that really mean? Are we really yeah, yeah, yeah. living from it, you know? But going then away from youth racing, then that, that was hard, you know? And I, and, and I didn't have anything. And my dad, you know, I think my dad was having quite tough times at work as well. And it was like, look, if you want to make it as a rider, you, you're on your own. Yeah, so he didn't maybe stop coming out to some of the After events. your mum yeah. yelled at him, is this? Yeah. He yeah. still got the arse because your mum yelled at him. Yeah, once. yeah, that was it, when I was 11. <laughs> 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 but no, I, I just, it was kind of like, you're on your own. And I got lucky because I've got a great mechanic friend who, you know, was, you know, a great guy, you know, and, and, and totally, you know, you spend time, you want to look at what your future is. You look at the people you're with now. And, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was a great guy to be around. And then who that was helped that? me. A guy called Martin Stevens. Right. Very clever guy. Um, and, um, yeah, so we rode for KTM and then rode for Yamaha and oh, I rode KTM, then back to Kawasaki and then rode for Yamaha and uh, did all right. It's Yamaha, I really remember you riding as an adult. Yeah, I remember yeah. Schoolboy was Team Green. Yeah. And, uh, Suzuki you rode as well, didn't you? No. No. There you go. Can you clip that, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, the Yamaha, yeah, the Yamaha days on the big WR. I thought you rode with Eastie on Suzuki. No. Rode a Kajiva. Who was that? Kajiva. No, he Kajiva. ran the Suzuki team, which I... Oh, yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah. So yeah. I wasn't I wrong. I did have an involvement. There is a yeah, Suzuki yeah. involvement there somewhere. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so did that. Retribution. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so KTM was through a guy called Gordon Jones. Yeah, local He was just the loveliest man in motocross. Yeah, good as gold. Like, and then because of that, you know, I was 16 and out in the big wild world, couldn't even drive. No. And then, then I was... I've got to do this all on my own. And, and, then, um, and then the person that Gordon put me with to help me through was a guy called Russ Jarman. <laughs> that's a Which partnership, like, isn't it? That's a, that's a partnership. <laughs> he was just brilliant. Destined for oh, fun yeah. times and mild yeah. disaster, surely. He's, Russ is a legend. He's a legend and he's a, he was the funniest man and still is the funniest man you'll ever meet. Uh, apart from his dad. His dad was funnier than yeah. him. Yeah. They were dirt just man, they used to call his dad. Yeah, yeah. The funniest family in the world. And then, I remember I bought a pressure washer off him and it was on Crime Watch on the Tuesday. <laughs> That's not a surprise. <laughs> so they, they, were, they were brilliant. <laughs> Russ was amazing. Gordon Jones Good was amazing. Gold. Lovely. People. All of them were great. And because of Russ, then, then our little group was him, Greg Hansen, um, and Dave Thorpe was, you know, in and amongst that thing in that yeah. Camberley, Surrey area, which is where I was living then. Yeah. So I didn't, without recognising it, I just luckily ended up around the right people and yeah. the right riders that put their arm around me a little bit in fairness. Russ did that, Greg did that, and and that therefore the pressure got a bit released. Yeah. And um and Greg's a good egg, isn't he? Yeah, amazing bloke. Greg's a good egg. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he really is. And, you uh, you you had a good GP career, but 
you know. No shit. Okay, well that's Quarter your fight, but not. <laughs> Well, that's the start. Yeah, yeah. No, and at least you got your thousand. Yeah, you, yeah. you got your thousand Swiss then. francs then, yeah. anyway. And that's it. I don't think people would realise that. Like, so if any youngsters listening, like, we used to go to a Grand Prix where you'd have two groups of forty riders, yeah. didn't you? And the top ten, had, the top ten in the championship, had already qualified to race in the Grand Prix. Mm. So only fifteen from each of those groups would qualify yeah. to race the Grand Prix. Yeah. It was do or die. Oh fuck yeah, and, chaos, man! And and I, and I luckily I did. I was good at qualifying, so I never didn't. Qual- I think I you might could switch it on for a lap or once. two. Yeah, I was hanging off it. And the only time I wasn't going to qualify was in, and I never forget this day in in Italy. Can't remember the track. And there was no way was I going to qualify. I was like every lap I put in, it's like ah oh, fuck, this is it, bollocks. Like how yeah, nothing happening? worse. Trying your nuts off, and so I thought right, numbers ain't coming. Go and go and watch a few people, and then I watched Phantom. Right, cut the track. I'm like, yes, I'm having some of that, and did that. I got involved with a bit of that a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. and and then you work but out. Then, hang on a minute, they're all doing it. Yeah, yeah. And all the Italians were cheating, so I managed to qualify. And I'll never forget. I walked back to the pits, and Alec, right, I bumped into him, and he went, "See what you did there, kid." He went. Good on you. Good. That good. He was. You got to do what so you got to do because a lot of the times you yeah, perform yeah, all right survival. in the race. It's yeah. survival. You need that thousand French yeah, Swiss yeah. francs. Yeah. Just to any Italian fans out there might be watching, other countries do cheat. No, no, as well. I was involved with an English Grand <laughs> Prix ride. All the Italians were cheating. It. It they were cheating at their home race. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, back in the day with the Belgians and stuff, they used to when the riders were oh, the fans were marking the track. They used to move the fence back. Yeah. I had it in Finland, and I'm not going to say which rider, but we'd clocked. Yeah. The lap time from coming over the finish line, mechanics area was after. Yeah. So they'd pull in the mechanics area like there was a problem, go back to the van, rejoin the track halfway round, come round to his brother who was stood two corners from the end, looking at the stopwatch, send him round to do the last two corners, qualify. Thank you very much. Because you so, needed the money. You so needed the, the, the money. Back in the day. So you know I did that at Fox Hills at your race. Did you? Good for you. So. <laughs> So the confession, I, this I is came, brilliant. I came out, so in qualifying, I stupidly, like I've only got about one lap in me at best. <laughs> so I came out and did one lap that I was so impressed with, my first lap. Then I stopped and looked and looked at the timing. And of course, the first lap wasn't counted, was it? No. I said, like, oh shit, I've got to do another one. So I rode round, waited at the top, got a pint wheeler, went past the finishing round and then thought, hang on a minute. I'm 50, I've got plenty of like, experience here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I stopped at the bottom, I cruised round and back up. Followed Wheeler round again. And then then I got the fastest lap by a minute and 10 seconds. <laughs> Did you know? And I thought... That's impressive. I thought, well, they're not going to... Obviously, they're going to shunt me back. So it didn't matter. I turned up at the pit box and good, good old Terry went, I'm not looking at the times. He said, you're just down as number one. Good enough for me. So, Happy day. There you go. <laughs> and Please then, don't do it, that this year. Was this this year or the previous? No, the, this sorry, year. Oh, well, the last, the year, last year. 23. And then yeah. it went, yeah, and that, sorry, yeah. Wrong. And then it went all alarmingly yeah, yeah. wrong. Yeah. Which probably didn't help the neck injury even more. No. But just, 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 if you can. Why'd you ride a 500? Just ride some. Because I've got one. It's like, it's, and oddly, I like it, which is really weird to admit. Yeah, but yeah. it doesn't like you. It keeps no, spitting know. you off a bit. I know. Maybe I need to. Because you can go... Mate, can you pull some strings and get these fucking diggers to stop working for a <laughs> No, I need them to finish it. <laughs> um, I don't know why I ride a 500 Kawasaki, other than the fact if that... If you enjoy riding it, it's a, it's a lazy bike. You haven't you got to be ride, up and down the gear. You can go box. quite quickly without doing too much. Yeah, you leave it in third gear most yeah, of the time. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, without yeah. doing too much, but that's the um, trouble. Yeah. Well, it's like a 450 you end though, up, isn't it? Yeah. You're not wheeling down a hill. Yeah. I really did. I broke my foot. Broke your foot. Then you was at this the, the AX Festival in a in yeah, a yeah. in a boot. And I know, I know. And it's vowing like, never to do it again. Yet we started this podcast saying that you're going to be back in. He wants some wheels building. What is wrong with you? Yeah, I don't know. It's I a racer. It's a racer kid. You can't. Well, you can't yeah, get the racer out of it. Yeah, we it need to have it. that conversation. We've already discussed. Yeah, Jeffrey coming yes. back to the start gate. Why don't you ride my bike? Between so what I have to do is then maybe come yeah. back and then do the live stream commentary then jump out you know yeah. I'm kind of used to it now though obviously running around <laughs> I was going to say like we, like we do yeah. we do here so why did grounds. Matt Bates park it up because um, let's talk about like for example riders like Carmichael Villapoto they, they yeah. retire in like before they've even hit 30 you, you actually retired relatively Wait, early on then. but I'm guessing yeah, yeah. it wasn't because you had enough money in the bank <laughs> to go call it a day yeah funny am that I, yeah, am I, I didn't I have a that? goat farm to sell no yeah yeah <laughs> 
No, I I am. Um, I kind of I did. I hurt myself and I and I I hit my head hard, and it was at Fox Hills, <laughs> and funnily enough, funnily enough, funnily enough, I've only just realised yeah. that. <laughs> right. So I was. There was always New Year's Day, big international race. Yeah. Then Cullum, so the, there was an international race there, and then it went to Fox Hills, and. And I, I'd worked so hard during the winter, and then I was, I was doing what I thought was doing it right. And I went to Hawkstone Park and didn't have a great first race, won the second one. What went, year was this? Went to Cullum. 1990-ish? Uh, 92. 92. I got that wrong the first time. 92, there yeah. You go. And went to Cullum and won that. Went to Fox Hills, and I felt so good. You know when you're like, right, this is it. I'm, you're I'm having right. it. I'm, I'm all right. Fucking and then that was it. it. The lights went out. As I don't ever remember being at the race. Really? And I still never remember being at the race. So I had quite a big, big one. I hit my head really, really hard. I came back way too soon. And I, and I wouldn't admit it to anyone. And I know we've had this conversation. And I know that's the first time I've ever admitted it properly. But I scared myself. And, and for a, a good year, I lined up on every single start. Absolutely shitting myself i did not want to be out there it's, it's still quite a confession even That's second it. time around yeah. I know you're talking oh, about no, it is. and it, now it makes the hairs on my neck stand up because i remember that feeling of i do not want to be here and and, I, and fear fear is a terrible yeah, terrible yeah. Fear. at the end of the yeah. day you're not going to perform if you're scared no. you know what i mean and yet because i didn't admit it i was too young you know i was 21 and didn't want to admit it didn't want to tell anybody because you know, you're too young to deal with it and you don't want to deal with defeat and what could anyone do? But now as we're, we're in a different world now, I would have been able to get help yes. and I could have told Roger Harvey and Roger yeah. would have gone, probably Snap out of it, you sort yourself <laughs> out. <laughs> exactly. No, 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 it's a fact. That's exactly what he would have said. In fact, the he's that here one. tomorrow night. I'm going to ask him. <laughs> right. And he would have done. He was a hardcore fucking motocross rider yeah. who was my manager. I liked very, very much. And I can't not like Raj, can you? Yeah, no, he's can't a mega not guy. like him. And and I felt like I was letting him down. Yeah. You know, here's this guy who's like, you know, taking a punt on me and I and then and I was done in, you know. And so then at the end of that year, I couldn't really get a ride. But I was grateful of it. And so yeah, genuinely yeah, I was, were. I was it like, was like in a, a route out without yeah. you out of enough to actually. Totally. You and had I, like a a legitimate excuse to sort of back, well, I can't get yeah. a ride. Yeah, it's completely that. It was like, but I couldn't. And no, but that by the by, but yeah, yeah. It, was like, it was it was legitimate. And then, and then I phoned up Kawasaki because I always had my go-to pick up the phone to Alec, and Alec will help me. And I'm like, I don't want him to help me, but I'm going to phone him oddly. And I phoned him, and he went, um, speak to Colin, Colin, right? Spoke to Colin. Colin went, what do you want to do? And I could be honest with him. I was like, I don't want to race. But I need a job. So he gave me a job fixing um, road bikes from the, so recall bikes that are in the factory. I'd unbox them and, you know, fit icing kits to them. So, uh, yeah. Cut, yeah, something technical. And then I did that for a couple of months. And I think Alec was so impressed that I'd actually done that. I showed up to work every day. Yeah. And I went to work every day. Simple as that. He then came and found me and he went, right. I'm going to, our Grand Prix team's going to Yander Group in, in Holland. I'm retiring. Um, I need someone to work for me for a year, running Team Green and doing training schools and all that. Are you up for it? And I'll pay you this. I was like, holy shit. I've never been paid that much to yeah. ride a bike. And my fear disappeared overnight because it was no pressure. And then I was, I inherited Stephen Sword, Billy McKenzie, and all of those kids. Princey, Neil Prince? No, Neil Prince no, was came later. Um, a few others. Ricky, Ricky Prince? Greg Mills. Greg, yeah. Remember Greg Mills? Yeah, I do. He's a Radio um, 1 DJ, isn't he? <laughs> not that same one. Oh, OK. Which is like the, well, not, I don't think <laughs> it is. Be, yeah. Um, <laughs> Never seen yeah, them. Face for radio, etc. A few of them. And um, so that was it. And that's where the Team Greens thing started. Yeah. And, um, and um, worked for them for five years doing that and loved it did team green and so doing that like give you the obviously the skill set i suppose to to now lead into what you did uh, uh, like after that because you, you yeah you did team green but then 
Uh, you then, what was that, five years you said you did that work? Yeah, I started as running training schools. And then in that five years, I then was running all the, I was running the youth racing, then the adult racing, then everything Team Green, dealerships, um, you know, customer service, absolutely everything in Team Green. And I guess I was, I was like this one man band juggling everything, yeah. which kind of has set me up because I do exactly the same now. Yeah, the skill probably. set, yeah. you have to learn like yeah, the, corporate, the corporate side of it, yeah, yeah. how yeah. marketing works. Yeah, totally. And it was all about selling bikes. And, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, it was quite, it was quite impressive. Got a bit of a sound <laughs> is that going to be? A, is that going to be a problem? Let's look at the power. The power, look at the power that you exceed. Yeah, look at that. And as if like <laughs> magic, when he says jump, they say how high. Yeah. I can't jump very high, so I don't ask that. <laughs> My knee won't let me jump anything. So. St so Where the Kawasaki we? thing, we were at the Kawasaki, so you did that yeah. for five years. Then how did, how did that come an end, to an end? You just fancied a change because you ended up then, if I've yeah. got this right, moving to doing stuff with Suzuki, didn't you? Yeah, I did. So I was with Kawasaki for those years. And it was in 97. I ran the first, I kind of worked out that, you know, there's a lot of riders riding Kawasaki. And then I rented Fox Hills. I don't even know. I, I, I picked up the phone to John Haller and got Fox Hills for a day and did a Team Green track day because I'd watched them do it in road racing. I was like, right, I'll have some of that. Let's yeah. do it for all the dirt bike riders. And um, so we got like, I think two or three hundred riders at least turned up. And I remember being there with just one other guy running it thinking, holy shit, I think I've bitten off too much. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we know that feeling. Um, but we did this great day. It was brilliant. And that was where, that was the, the switch for me where I went, I want to run events. It, literally, you it came of, what, on the day or the you day. drove home? And... No, it was on the day. I was like, I was, I was buzzing from what we've done. And that was, that was August 97, I think. And then, and then only a month or two after, Suzuki had approached me and said, look, we want to do a similar thing to Team Green. And, and things had changed a lot at Kawasaki, which, which, they were so not interested in motocross or off-road. You know, it was, you know, I was like, right, I'm done, you know, and tried to get them to let me change things a bit, but they weren't interested. So, so I then went and set up my own business with Suzuki um, and, and kind of grew from them. Within, within two years, I'd run my first Supercross. Yeah. Yeah. And doing the Suzuki thing. Was yeah. it Planet, Planet, Planet Promotions? That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you went to Suzuki and started 98? No? Yep. Yeah, yeah that would have been a right. 98, was it? It must have been, because yeah, you had a year doing it before That's right. we yeah. then, or yeah. the whole conversation with Animal, and yeah. it became Animal yeah, Suzuki, yeah. and that's when you got me and James to ride. Yep. Yeah. And simultaneously, wow, that's a, that's a lot to do, isn't it? Like taking yeah. on Suzuki and the Supercrosses. Why, yeah. why, why? It's, I think it's an obvious question, but I'm still going to answer it. Ask it. Why Supercross? Because just because nobody else was yeah. doing it, or, yeah, or you I, saw the value straight where away. Where was the first one? I had a few at Matchams. West Point Arena. West Point oh, Arena. Yeah. Yeah. That was a quality night. That was when Boris won. Boris won. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. Didn't we know it? And, uh, <laughs> he did no, make the most of that. And credit to him. Yeah, he made play. the most so, of that. That was a good night. I enjoyed that. Yeah, Exeter was great. So that came from. You know, I was quite close to Mike Church, Tom Church Road for Kawasaki, and or we supported their team yeah. with Hark and Tom Church. And um, Mike said to me, oh, look, they did a, did a Supercross in Exeter last year, kind of needed some help to put it together. Are you up for having a go? It's like, yes, I'm straight in. Yeah. And um, so I then ran it, and, and, and I, I just knew this was exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I literally picked it up and ran with it. And I never, and I, I never ever looked to Mike or anyone to bankroll it or anything. I was like, right, I'm going with this and I'm going to go to the NEC. I'm going to go to London. That was and a vision somehow, even, even then, yeah, before yeah. you'd even done the first yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, it was like, I'm doing It's not this. like, let's do the first one, see where we go. You yeah. straight so away. So what year was yeah. that first one? My first one was 
99. 99, 2000, yeah. I was going to say. I remember it well. I was in it. Yeah. Didn't Jeff Herring race? It? it just went yeah, down yeah, in the yeah. woods. Yeah, Robbie did. Yeah. 65 class was Jake Nichols was first. Was Tommy it? Searle was second. I can remember no, that now, those kids. Remember. God, no, you're making me feel so ridiculously old. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. riding. Yeah, it's great. And that, that like... Yeah, it's nice to have those memories and you look at who's there and who's yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so, yeah, that was, um, that was what I did and then kind of picked up and ran with it. I got lucky, got introduced to Red Bull and Red Bull then straight away got behind it. Um, and That's not a normal sense. I, I just casually got introduced to Red yeah. Bull. I mean... No, it was a bit uh, more than that. Like, it was... They, again, is that through a connection of somebody that you, you, you knew or did you to, go beat I've been speaking to Red Bull and that, they're not interested in our job. No. So you say vets, they're out. No, they're done. They don't yeah, care. They Wrong demographic. Animals and old people, they don't They're not know. interested now. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically both. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't fit in yeah. that Yeah, No, we are not in yeah, the yeah. Uh, demographic. It's, um, no, the Red Bull thing, uh, oddly, so the person that's been working me forever with sponsorship, who will be here tomorrow night, is still one of my best mates. And... Um, so he arranged that, got introduced to Red Bull, who were quite small at the time. There were two yeah. or three people in, in London. And I remember looking at this drink thinking, what is this shit? Like, what, are, really, are we going to do this? And the, He's got and off then, to a good start with the marketing spiel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, What's this shit? <laughs> God, blimey. Oh, God. I've Mind got, you, how much I've do you got drink? another story about energy drinks, but I'll save oh, that for when mate. we're not on it. It's like, how, do you, um, how many do you drink? Me I don't and my usual stuff. bluntness. But anyway, so... Um, <laughs> So yeah, that was Red Bull. And then I met um, a guy called Daniel Schwalb, who was an uh, Austrian guy. I still remember involved with him, Red Bull. I remember him. Loveliest man ever. And he totally bought into what we did and he backed me for Yeah, years. he was really cool. Amazing guy. He was guy. so positive all the time. Yeah, and, and, I just, and then I worked more and more and more with Red Bull, you know, and, and, and that turned into Red Bull, you know, Red Bull X Fighters, Red Bull Pro Nationals Motocross. That turned into us racing tower bridge and jumping robbie madison over it and just endless i mean that is things. some organization mind isn't it to yeah, deal with the was, ways and all that yeah that was a lot of work unreal that was it makes arena cross look so easy well that, that would have been sort of like you don't close down any street in london without a load of aggro no. but the bridge that's like port authority authority isn't it it was and then um, having like as well yeah, having like, them authority to let him jump over it because imagine it was the tower hamlets council and London Borough Council, I think, because okay, so the council split once the r bridge is raised. Okay, so yeah. so now you've got Seriously? to deal with two councils straight. So is it one so council one, one side, council one council on the other side? One council the other. When the bridge is down, you're they jumping work from one council to the other. Oh my god! So <laughs> and then the the Lord Mayor's office is at the foot of the bridge, or more or less. So I had to get permission from the Mayor's office, two London Borough Councils. Um, in the fairness, Red Bull were amazing. They, they were still very involved in all of that. But then the logistics of doing it was just really, really hard. I can imagine. It was just... Like, cause I, uh, like, I remember talking to Robbie about it, and we, we were saying, well, well how are we going to do this? Let's build the thing in, Can in California where their training ground was, and we're going to remake the whole thing. So out of scaffolding, we rebuilt the whole thing raise the things on it and then that's bonkers because i've only just seen yeah. recently that they did this uh the same thing when he did the arc the triumph thing in yeah, vegas right. in exactly they the built same this, place yeah yeah I was they did the whole well. actual that was in, scaffold, that, all in scaffolding everything. that still is the coolest thing i've ever seen yeah yeah, yeah. when he going up to one thing but coming back down coming down you know he split all the webbing of his thumb when he came did down he? over jumped it yeah split so off. much stuff so you've done that you did the x fighters at battersea power station yeah. some major things yeah. Yeah, and got involved with them with other events as well. Like um, we did Calgary in Canada for X-Fighters. We helped them in Dubai. Um, to help them a bit with Red Bull Air Race. Um, Empire of Dirt. Uh, yeah. Um, um, in London with uh, Kai Forte and Big BMX mm. event. We did a few of those. So loads, loads. So, you, Lo loads. I mean, that, you just said it makes Arena Cross seem yeah. easy. Obviously, it's not. But in between... That starting Supercross. How did, how did you sort of get the, your hands on Supercross and such? I remember yeah. you telling me one time relationship with with John, oh, John, John Hallam, who was yeah, doing yeah. Supercross in the UK at the time. The Sheffield guy, yeah. the Sheffield. Canadian dude, Canadian, Canadian, Sheffield, yeah. yeah. And it was here. Is he did an all right job in fairness to him? Do you know he he did, and 
Um, I've probably told this story a few times, but I'll say it again. But when you're young, you know, you, there's an air of arrogance around you if you believe in what you're doing. And I believed I could do a better job than John Helen. Okay, that, and, and that was that, Yeah. right? Maybe I should have gone about it in a different way. So I had Supercross and he was still doing one or two events at Sheffield with McGrath and so on. Yeah. So naturally, we just didn't like each other. And at that point, Clear Channel then bought Supercross off me, who are the people that own Supercross now in America. Yeah, failed. Yeah. Okay, so same people. I worked with those people. And, um, and, uh, and I remember trying to work with John Hellen. I thought, no, never. Can't work with this guy. He's a clown. He doesn't know what he's doing. I hate what he does. Can't stand it. Anyway, fast forward a number of years, <laughs> having not done Supercross for a few years now, Feld had taken it. They didn't want to do anything with it in Europe. So it kind of petered out. 2012, I came to this arena where he did his last event. And, and I sat in the audience of about 1,800 people. And I thought, this is dire. You know, this is just, this is, it, it's destroying. So yeah. I went and saw him in his office here. And I was like, John, like, what have I got to do to make sure you never come back? Because I want to do what I want to do. And you're not getting younger and your son doesn't want to do it. Anyway, cutting a long story short, and if every listens to this, I just want to say one thing. Within five seconds of his response, I actually worked out that I really liked John Heller. Yeah. And in fact, what he had done was absolutely brilliant. It just had maybe petered out. But, but now I've been through this journey in the last decade, God, you know, fair play to John Hellam because equally, if it wasn't for John Hellam, I don't think we would have. You'd be doing this. No. no, no. He was always great to me because he'd always get yeah. me up with like Mike Jones yeah. to do the freestyle stuff. Yeah, yeah. And some of them nights in Sheffield with Mike Jones, we will not be talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and he, like, so, so John, you know, who for most people think he was Canadian, he wasn't. He was from Sheffield. Um, Why do I think he's guy. Canadian then? Well, because he moved over there. Because he, he? he was from. He lived there for like forty years. He's Canadian. It's good yeah, enough for he's, me. Yeah. He's as good as Canadian. <laughs> But he had this odd <laughs> Canadian Sheffield twang. He did, yeah. But John is it as weird as Dean, Dean no, Wilson's not accent? Not as weird as Dean Wilson. No, <laughs> fucking hell. Dino. Anyway. I like Dean. I love him. Love yeah, the family. We're gonna get, we're gonna Strange get accent on. though. <laughs> so yeah. So that was that. So then, and then, funnily enough, we're sat here ten years yeah. later. Um, I then obviously when when I said to John, you know, I had to. I bought the business off of him. Yeah. And. Um, which, which consisted of not a lot, but a, a lorry full of foam blocks. Okay. That I was like, oh, they're going to be worthless. And then I priced them up. I was like, holy shit, that's what I've just bought the business for. Yeah. yeah. So actually, I, I'm like, that's this right. hasn't been such a bad thing. No. Um, uh, somewhere, yeah. somewhere in between all that, though, Pro Nationals, which totally yeah. shaped everything up for British motocross. Yeah. And I know you're still passionate about where we're at yeah. with motocross, but... Yeah. Obviously, that came along. Um, Red Bull had a yeah. huge influence. I don't, you know, I think not putting yeah. words in your mouth, but you probably wouldn't be able to do that to the not level that you them. did without. No, them. look, I'm an opportunist, and I went. I was in Brighton, having something to eat. Say no more. Right. <laughs> with, <laughs> Let's not go down that with, road, man. With Red Bull, and we were doing Red Bull X Fighters promotions. We were taking them all around the cities. Um, sat next to the marketing director that was telling me how much Red Bull X Fighters cost. It's like, it's one event. You could spend a third of that, and I'll create a motocross series that goes through the, through the whole like, season. And, he, and literally, we agreed it there and then. There and then, like it was, that. It was like that. It was like, but that, how much? But and, that, and came, that came with its own complications in the fact that you, you almost had to go and start a, your own federation. Well, I didn't have to. You didn't have to, <laughs> but <laughs> that's another story. Yeah, yeah. So... Did well, you go no. and pitch that to, to the ACU yeah. at that point? Yeah, and love them, you know, I work with them now here, and I'm grateful that I do. But I went to them with the idea of, look, I want to, I just won the contract to run Western Beach Race. And then also, um, I had this idea of doing this pro nationals thing. And then also had an idea about the indoor stuff. And I was like, right. I can make this really work well together. And, uh, and I said, look, I really need you behind me to do this. 
and they'd laugh me out the door. You know, it's what, it was, it was, I, I, nowadays that wouldn't happen because the people that are there. But the people that were there did a lot of damage to our sport. And I said to them then, if you don't back me, I'm going to go and do my own thing. And then in 10 years time, you'll wish you'd done it because you will have, you will have destroyed it and, and you won't see what's coming. And, uh, and look at us, we're 10 years down the line and, and things are tough. Now that's not all because of the ACU. No. Okay, let's just be clear about that. But I do believe we'd all be in a better place if we'd all worked together at the beginning. Yeah, I really do. And I know that now, but... Oh, there you go, hindsight. Done, isn't it? Yeah. No, yeah. Can't I get mean, you've got to give credit, yeah. credit to yourself and Red Bull for having ideas and like, you know, like I went to the Straight Rhythm. That was a hell of an event. That yeah, was yeah. Mint. I mean, who came yeah. up with that? It was great. Eric Perrinard, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, he's a genius as well. Yeah, exactly. I worked with Eric for yeah. a year. He's a clever, yeah, clever, clever bloke. bloke. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah well, Eric did Bercy for those years, didn't he? Still yeah, does. for those that don't know Eric, Eric Perrinard is, you know, he started the Vegas Supercross. Yeah, you know, MGM he, Grand. MGM Grand, that then became the Monster Cup, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, and he's very much involved. Yeah, he's... Yeah, no, he's... Without him. Clever geezer. American Supercross, I don't think it'd be where it is. No, it's not. No, he's... A, for know, a French guy who yeah, was doing yeah. a few, like, off-season weird yeah, races, yeah, yeah. they were always the best things in the world, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Bercy was off the scale. Yeah, it was. You know, I'm not sure yeah. if it is now so much. I think I think Jeremy yeah. McGrath was probably responsible for the demise of Bercy because of the money they started getting yeah, paid. Yeah, So they couldn't yeah. afford all the big names. They could right. only have one or two. And, it, you know, when I first went in 87, yeah. and it was fucking who's who. It was like... But that's why... I've always been the believer that if you're going to create, and that's what I've done with Arena Cross, I haven't hung it on a rider. No. This Last year was probably the most I'd ever done that with Tommy. Yeah. But I had to. And, and, it, and, it, and it was a gamble, but it's paid off. Yeah. Whereas up to then, it's never been about one person. No. Because let's face it, if <laughs> Travis Pastrana didn't turn up at Nitro Circus, then why the fuck have I bought Nitro Circus tickets? Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you, so you, you, there is. you've got to just, there is. Arena Cross is Arena Cross. Yeah. It's not about me. I mean, it's so much better now. It used to be like a French championship. Yeah. And yeah, now, you know, because that's where the skill was. Now yeah, there's yeah. a lot of skill over here. And these guys yeah, yeah. are good at this stuff. Yeah. And now we've, because of injuries and that happens, we've got to bring in some international riders and they're well, some you've got to fill, French. You've got to fill the start gates. Yeah, end of the day. Right. Yeah, you yeah. know, you've got to put a show on. But if Tommy and Conrad were racing here with these guys, they would take a race. No, they would, for sure, yeah. I, I yeah, I, I, the standard, bringing Tommy and Conrad in, because they're arena cross specialists, but super cross yeah, and yeah. arena cross are slightly different I, things. I think and Harry like and Conrad. Conrad, yeah. his speed's been incredible. Yeah. How quickly he's learned, you know, learning once he gets rolling yeah, yeah. in the year and a half that he's been, to, yeah. well, year, really, that Do he's been. Do be back for Wembley? I'd love to think he, I hope so. Yeah. You know, because it was such a freak odd accident we're saying about everybody's saying about how dangerous it is and it's it, when the riders are all saying no it's it, it was just one of those weekends where yeah, odd stuff yeah. happened uh, you know conrad was going about 10 miles an hour and I rode know. over his own foot around a corner on Tommy a slow down lap, jump to jump you know it's it's unlucky but you know that's that's the way it is we just had a it was unlucky losing tommy at that first round yeah. and then we just had a nightmare in belfast that you're right. None of the riders blamed us or the track. There were some things that we might have done differently, but we we just got unlucky, mm. which is. But you still got a race series. You still got yeah, plenty going on. Yeah. It's not like there's a bunch of also runs out no, there. No, there's a lot of good riders out there. You know, there's still plenty to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the most. And it's the championship's yeah. down to one point at the moment. Yes, yeah, with right. two rounds to go. Yeah, exactly. Don't Had get any, double but, points in London is that it? they don't know about yet. Oh, well, there you <laughs> go. Throw that in there. <laughs> I knew it was a gap after there. this weekend. That's going in. <laughs> exactly. Double, right. triple, super duper points. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. We're going to have So you're about to just show up at the last fucking race then. Adding score. points for artistic <laughs> license. Absolutely. Well, artistic interpretation. It's, it's like, yeah. it's like playing football in the park. Next goal wins. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You win this, you win it all. Fuck it. So, what do you think, you know, regards of where we're at in the whole sport in the UK? You're, I know you're very proud of Arena Cross, and so yeah. you should be. Like, yeah. ten, no, to get yeah, ten awesome. years. Yeah. What What do you think Arena Cross like actually does for the for the bigger picture, or or what yeah. you think it should be doing for the sport in the UK? Because yeah. 
when I say this, obviously I work for you and I'm out there hosting the show and people say, oh, you're just saying that because it's your job. I don't. I say it because I no, mean it. Honest, Arena Cross yeah, yeah. does more for motocross yeah, yeah. than actually motocross. No, I'm sure the amount of people who come to watch, there's yeah. less people who actually own a bike yeah, yeah. in the stands here than there is at Hawkston. Yeah, there definitely is. You know, so and it's getting people in. Yeah, look, I, I am proud of it um, and I'm very grateful of the team of people that I've I've worked with, but I'm proud of that because I've put us all together and, and it, we're transient, you know, we're not always the same team, but but the core group is. And, but as for what it's done for motocross, I know it does a lot of good. And, and therefore I get animated when I see what people say, because I just think you're so short sighted because it is very clear that nobody wants to go to Cullum in March, uh, other than if you're an Uber fan and the Uber fans are going to go anywhere. Many, no, you know? they're going to go anywhere. You know, your race at Fox Hills is unique. Yeah. You know, you get more The thing is, it's your baby. Through. This is your baby. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Our race is my baby. And if somebody criticizes it, straight away it's you're pissed personal. off. Yeah, it's personal yeah. because yeah. then you're like, why well, do you put a fucking race on there? There's a calendar. Yeah. Pick a date and go and put a race on. That's yeah. what we did. Yeah, that's right. And that's that's why I say... <laughs> that's why you two should stay on social media. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and, and I'm not on social media. I've learned to stay away oh. from it. Because... And that, let me just back him up on it. And that is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it is. <laughs> it is. I, I think it is. It winds me. <laughs> outspoken. And like, and, and look. Are you done? And the only reason is like every step of my life and career has always been, I've always, rightly or wrongly, I've believed in what I'm doing. And I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm going there, and and you might not. I've always lived in this view that I will try so hard to get there that I'll get there, and when I'm there, you will all go, "Oh, you was right." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that did work, and and that's this journey now. And and going back to the point about does it help motocross? It helps biking. You know, so I know to, uh, tomorrow night there'll be six, seven thousand people in here, and I. I bet you someone will walk away from here. Go and buy a bike. And go and buy a bike. Yeah, no, it's mega. Or be a fan. Yeah, and go and watch more races. You've got it. Because you've got to be a fan before you're a rider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you've know? got to be and into it. You don't just stumble across it. And that's, that's why I said it does more for motocross than actual motocross. Because yeah. you come and watch it and you go, oh, I want to do that. Or your yeah, kid yeah. wants to do it. But you, you don't then jump straight onto arena cross track that means no, you go no, to no. your local dealer yeah yeah you buy yeah. a bike or you go Completely. on it and you're buying all the kit and then you go to your local practice track join yeah. your local motocross club to learn the skill set yeah to get to this now yeah. like american motocross look at that you know i know they got all the land and the vastness and all that and when they did the trans am series yeah. but really would would you even argue you're talking that about trans now where's that conversation <laughs> that it's the rover yeah he was, <laughs> but it went like American motocross really started to root and go yeah, places yeah. when they introduced yeah. Supercross in 72 yeah. because yeah, right. so many people are coming out of stadiums going right. this sport is cool where, where do I start but have you, have you seen the I numbers start? of bikes they were selling yeah, in the yeah. 70s yeah I know it's, it's fucking insane, insane. yeah the but amount of bikes it, they were selling pro rata is, is the same here you know I left Kawasaki and the last year I was there we sold over 3,000 motocross bikes yeah and like you I don't think all of the manufacturers combined sell no, anywhere near I don't that think many. So. so, like, I mean, like Suzuki, I, I think it's like double digits, isn't it? Well, I, I would expect so. <laughs> I don't know? think. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's not very many. It's quite you know, a shame. But the, I hope that. Look, what, one thing that bothers me is the fact that our industry needs to wake up. Right, that's what I think. Whether I say this in the right way or wrong way, I don't care. I'm just going to say it. Oh, here we right? go. There we go. The, hold uh, finger just, on the edit button, get, Danny. Oh, get your finger on, on the edit button. He's I'm going now. We've, right. warmed, we've warmed him up now. He's <laughs> going now. No, no. <laughs> I, I believe I'm qualified enough to say this and mean this in the best way possible because the outcome is we sell more bikes and products. Yeah. Okay, so that's what's got to be remembered about what I'm going to say. But the industry needs to wake up because here I am throughout the months of January, February, March, putting thousands of people, 30, 40,000 people in front of our school, all right? Yeah. And where is the industry? Where are they? they oh, no, be... we don't do it. We're, some of the brands and manufacturers and, and distributors, they're just going, no, not interested in that. How can you be not oh, interested? Okay. So let me, let me put it another way. If I put that many, if I could give you a solution to put one, one hundredth of those number of people through your dealerships, 
that buy products or go onto your website to buy online, you would snap my arm off. Yeah. But instead, what, what are you doing? Like, what, why aren't you here? Even when I invite you, come along, come as a guest, you turn me down. What the fuck? No, like, it's tough. Honestly. I mean, I know the numbers are down. The numbers are down. But can you turn it around? It, is it going to take electric to turn it around? It might be. Yeah, but, what, is the, what, what do you see the future? What do you see the future? You know, because like, you've got 10 people, years yeah, under yeah, your belt. Yeah. Where, yeah, yeah. where are we going? Where are yeah. you going with Arena Cross? Is it 10 well, years and done? Have we got another 10 years no, out of here? What, what's your oh, have God, you got yeah, a plan? Like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I want to take Arena Cross out of the UK. That's, that's for definite. I want to keep some events here in the UK because it works really well. And, you did that before? Did you have a race in Belgium or France? No, the Pro Nationals I did. Yes, okay. Um, so I want to take Arena Cross abroad, like I was planning to just before COVID and we had a number of things arranged to, to go to the Middle East. We're fairly close to that stuff now. Yeah. And then, and then see where I want it to be, I want it to be an official FIM World Championship. And then then I want the industry to look at it and go, just like I said before, shit, he said he was going to do that. Yeah. And he, he, he's doing it. And yes, we're behind this now. And so, and if it goes electric, it goes electric. I'm not in control of what, this, what the industry does. You know? No. I think it's everybody I, I just saying, give them the playground. Everybody's saying that the electric's going to be this and that. The only people it's going to affect is exhaust pipe manufacturers. <laughs> everybody else yeah, is yeah, going to be yeah. having a great time with tyres yeah. and plastics and grips and... Goggles, yeah, yeah. all that stuff's still going to be buoyant. You know, yeah, the more people true. buy them, yeah, yeah. the more people buy stuff, which is better for the whole industry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, look, it's good all round. I don't, I don't see it. I don't see electric as negative. Hence the reason why Stark. I welcome them with open arms. There's like, why wouldn't I? No, like, I don't get is like why, you know? like in cars, left yeah. field Tesla. Yeah, yeah. Nobody heard of them five years ago, no, and right. now with motocross, Stark. Why yeah, is yeah. not the, yeah, yeah. the bigger manufacturers? I know Honda have got one. Yeah, where the fuck is everybody else? But they will. It will happen. So, so it will happen, and it will take time. And I, if I had to stick my finger in the air and say, right, where do what is the twenty thirty four Arena Cross series going to look like? It will be electric only. Yeah, yeah. It's I think that'd it's, be it's going to open up different avenues, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose yeah. looking at it this way. I'm thinking, you know, that we've all been to music festivals, Glastonbury, yeah, summer, yeah. summer, British summertime in Hyde yeah. Park. Yeah. I guess then, yeah. all of a sudden, you could go, well, let's bang an arena cross in the middle of that, and yeah, it's not going to be not gonna such an anything. issue, is it? No. no, no, exactly that. And look, there's it will open so many doors and interest youngsters. It's it, the sport. The governing bodies have to work out how to control it. Manufacturers have to deliver it, and like I said. I'll give them the piece of entertainment because if the if the manufacturers and importers and distributors work out that the way to to gain customers and consumers and brand lovers is via entertainment, yeah, then they'll click on and it'll. Otherwise, uh, how else are they going to get into it? That's right. You can keep hitting them with the same Facebook and Instagram message if you really want, but you know what? You've got to got to get them out. You've got to. Bums on seats, kid. You've got to get that. Exactly. Yeah, You've got yeah. to get the feel of the atmosphere, and that's yeah, yeah. really important. Right. We're going to wrap this up. because Well, we're going to have to because, well, you've Matt's got... That's a busy man. You've got, got this to do. I can't believe we've actually held him here this long um, so because when, you're, in, when you're involved in this, you're normally radio in one hand, then phone on the other, <laughs> being, being God, telling people to turn the music down, turn yeah, it up, job. doing whatever, lecturing me and Matt. He doesn't, actually. It's pretty yeah, good. The man runs the show. It's he the does run the show, the but I would, love, him and I, would, that's a big deal. I would love to put out the audio, our audio, of yeah. the show one time, though. Probably Just yeah. in case you didn't know. So me and Matt Crow are still hosting the show. We're in comms with Matt the whole time, or he's in comms with us. Interesting little nuggets of information he puts in our, in our <laughs> ear. Not always about the racing, <laughs> I'd like to point out. <laughs> I have to be careful because you don't repeat it, but Matt has this <laughs> habit of... If I, whatever I say to him, it comes straight out of his mouth. It's like this yeah. delayed. Thanks for that, yeah, Matt. You used to have it with, so the, with, the, team ra- with the, the team radios yeah, yeah, yeah. on yeah. the Supercross, with the team radios on. They'd be like, have you seen Reed's Mrs. Tits? But like, <laughs> nothing to do with anything else. <laughs> it's nothing like that. Really? I just like no, point nothing out. at all. Um, thanks for your time, Matt. No there you get back to work. Um, Sorry it took twice, stuff. kid. There you go. Cheers, mate. Sorry yeah, second time around. Um, and there you go. That's another Talk Moto podcast. We've got more of these coming on. Go on, Wobs, what are you saying? No, just wishing you good luck, kid. It's, uh, 
Thank you. You, you must have big balls because to rent this day, I rent a field in Swindon and it, I yeah. shit myself. And for you to yeah. rent this and hopefully sell enough seats, good for you. It's, yeah, it's, uh, and if anybody wants to criticise, tell them. I haven't gone grey like you yet. No, I was having daughters. That's having, that's having daughters, kid. <laughs> yeah, my sons are hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> I've gone grey, but just... Yeah, yeah. I, I am slowly <laughs> drowning in grey hair. Yeah, like, yeah. I might go down he's, just for men. Because these think. two are working me too hard. That's it, like an old badger. Okay, that's us done. Uh, we'll days. be back for some more um, further down the line. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, big shout out to Talon and everybody involved. Nice one. Thank you.